There are some home items that are very common, yet they are also almost impossible to keep looking clean, even if you've just cleaned them. In fact, I bet you have some of them in your home right now. I definitely do. You guys loved the last video I did on this topic, so I'm back again today with 20 more items to never have in your home if you hate cleaning. And some of these items are your suggestions. I got lots of comments in the last video, people giving me suggestions and ideas of new things, so I've got lots to share today. And listen, if you have these items around your home, don't worry, I've got them all over my house. Some of these can be fixed, and even better, if you're moving or you're lucky enough to be maybe building something or renovating, don't make the mistakes I did. The first one is brick backsplashes in your kitchen. I don't know how this has become a trend, but it's definitely very trendy. I've seen it in a lot of kitchens. I know how hard brick is to clean. I actually have a lot, I mean, I have brick right behind me, but I have brick all over my house. I'm in a row house, and so we've got brick. I've even got some in the kitchen. However, I do not have it behind where I am cooking and where food and oil and everything is splashing up onto it. Brick has a lot of rough surfaces and grooves, definitely not easy to keep clean. If you seal it, it may be a little bit easier to clean. If you do have brick, it's just gonna be more work. Speaking of more work, another thing I'll talk about with backsplashes is if you've got tile back backsplashes, I think these are really pretty. I think that, you know, they've been in style for many, many years. If you have the white grout, I'm very sorry because it is going to result in so much cleaning for you. And actually what's gonna happen, it's gonna look beautiful when it gets installed and then maybe a week later, it's never gonna be white again unless you are constantly cleaning it, constantly upkeeping it. I do have white, I have subway tiles in the back of my house in the laundry room. I think that white grout is fine for those types of areas because nobody's cooking in there. In the bathroom or in the kitchen, you definitely wanna go with like a, maybe a gray grout. That's the easiest one to keep clean. If you're enjoying content like this, go ahead and click that subscribe button down below. It is free and I make videos twice a week. This next one is something that Everybody wants, everybody loves it. I mean, I will admit it looks beautiful, but glass shower doors. A lot of you commented about this as well. You find these are impossible to keep clean and I completely agree. I know that you can squeegee them and that will kind of extend the cleanliness, but let me tell you, they get water spots. The minute you take a shower, they look dirty. They are very hard to maintain. And what's even worse is if you have hard water and you allow it to build up with the soap scum, then it starts etching the glass and actually ruining it. This next one came from you guys and I have to share the comment that was made on this one. And the comment just simply said, open shelving is a design mistake you only make once. I did have open shelves in my kitchen in a place that I was renting. And when we first saw it and when we decided to rent the place, I was like, oh, this is so pretty. It's gonna look so nice. Here's the problem. Open shelving is very hard to keep clean. It, you know, traps all the dust in there because it's open, so all the dust comes in. And if it's in the kitchen, then you've got stuff coming from your cooking. And not only the dust, I don't even think that's the biggest problem with the open shelving. I think it's the fact that you need to keep them always looking nice and uncluttered. I have many cabinets and cupboards that are stuffed and full. I don't need anybody seeing what's behind those doors. I like the door to hide the clutter. Life is hard enough, don't make it harder on yourself. Intricate sink faucets and the ones with two handles. The reason why I'm putting this in here is because the faucets with two handles, if you have hard water, you know the struggle. You will just get a ring, you will get all of the deposits all around. And so instead of having to clean like the one connection point, now you've got to clean two, in some cases three, because you may have the faucet and then the handles. So if you can, a simple fixture is better, something smooth, something easy to keep clean. In my last video, I shared the dark flooring was very difficult to keep clean. And I stand by this, the light hits it, any speck of dust shows. But for this tip, I'm gonna share on the alternative white flooring plain white flooring, and you guys shared this as well. Plain white flooring shows just as much dirt and dust as the dark wood or the dark black flooring. Ornate chandeliers. These used to be very popular. I have one. I have a crystal one with lots of little crystals and bulbs hanging down. It's a dust trap. It is constantly full of dust. Every time I turn the light on, I can see the dust in there. It's a pain to keep clean. So if you're looking to change your light fixtures out, continuing with lighting, I wanna warn you about this next one because 
I have this. In fact, I'm gonna show you, I'll put some footage up of what I've got. This is outside of my house. It is this upside down light fixture. Do you see how this is like a little bowl so that every leaf, every twig, every piece of dirt can just collect in here and it just settles and collects and it looks terrible, right? Because it's clear. But they don't just sell these for outdoor use. They also sell them for in your house. I almost made a terrible mistake recently. I was looking at lighting fixtures for my kid's bathroom. I had painted it and we needed to change the light fixture because it was breaking. And I sent my mom some options and I sent her one with the upside down light fixtures. And she immediately wrote back and was like, do not get that one. It will be a nightmare to clean. Completely slipped my mind. Absolutely correct. I am so glad I didn't get something like that. You want the light fixtures that face down, the ones that do not collect the dust and the dirt. And I don't know about you, but my bathroom gets very dusty. So if I had gotten those light fixtures, I would have been pretty sad. One more thing about lighting. But if you have seen those basket light fixtures or those basket lighting things that everybody has right now, they're very trendy. Again, how do you dust a basket? I don't know how you keep it clean. I, I mean, maybe you could vacuum it. You certainly can't use water and wash it. Next is curtains with grommets. Okay, so I think that these are handy. It's like you've got your curtain with the hooks built into it, right? The problem is, I'm not sure how you would actually wash those curtains because you can't throw them in the washing machine. I mean, maybe you could, but you could risk scratching the drum because you've got those metal pieces and then you've got a metal drum in your washing machine and your dryer. I just wouldn't do it. I ended up switching out my curtains recently. I used to have ones with grommets in my living room and then I switched to ones that are on these like pinch pleat ones on hooks. And I must confess, the ones that were the grommet style, I had never washed them and they were incredibly dusty. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about a few kitchen items now, and I think that the kitchen is one of those rooms, it's just the hardest room to keep clean in my house, in my opinion. Let me know in the comments below what room you have trouble keeping clean, but for me, it's the kitchen. And one of the things that I think you should never have, the ornate cupboards with like the fancy trim. The problem is, and I've got some trim on mine, so I feel your pain if you have these. The problem is, th in your kitchen, it's very dusty, and then you're cooking, and you get the cooking oils, and then the dust and the cooking oil come together, and they settle in those grooves, and they turn black, and they're impossible to clean. How do you even get in those grooves? I know a lot of you have, su have suggested the Dawn degreaser, the Dawn power wash, which I love. It is a great cleaning product. But if you can get the cabinets without all of that fancy trim, you don't even need to worry about it. This next one is going to probably get me in a lot of trouble because I know many, many people have this. I'm anticipating a lot of comments. In the last video I did, there were a lot of comments because I mentioned to never have a gas stove. And listen, I have a gas stove. I just find that the gas grates are really hard to clean. And the comment section was crazy with people talking about how they love their gas stoves. And I bet the one I'm about to share is going to be the contentious one of this video. But I have to say it, and I know how hard it is to keep clean. I do not have this one. My dad has it, and it is stainless steel sinks. In fact, the stainless steel sinks are so hard to keep clean that my dad, he's got two sinks. They don't even use the stainless steel sink. They, use, they only use the other one because of the issues with keeping it clean. What happens with the stainless steel is you use it once, you've got water spots. It's just the nature of it. And then it very quickly becomes not shiny. You have to clean it regularly. Beautiful, but high maintenance. And I've even seen a lot of them in bathrooms. Again, you're gonna have to be cleaning them a lot. So if you don't mind cleaning, that's fine. I personally don't wanna be cleaning the sink out every week. Okay, this other one kind of goes along with stainless steel sinks because this is where I mostly see them in use but it's the sink grates. Sometimes these are even installed into the sink, other times they're removable. I think that they're there to protect the bottom of your sink when you're cleaning your pots and pans. The problem is it's just like the gas grates. They get really dirty. There's no real way to clean them. They kind of trap all of grease and oil in there and then you have to scrub them. I would rather just scrub the bottom of the sink. Counters with lips or edges. If you have, like I do, a counter that was made in like the early 2000s or so, those kind of decorative counters were all the rage. They've got the little fancy edges. Nowadays, they make the counters just very sleek and minimal. I hope it's not a trend. It may be a trend right now, but 
that's what you want to get. If you can get a countertop that is not ornate, because all those little crevices, again, they trap the dirt, they trap the dust, and so instead of just simply wiping down your counter, then you have to start getting on the ledges and getting in the crevices. I mean, not the end of the world, but if you can just have one flat counter to wipe, why not do that? This next one seems like it would be not so difficult to keep clean, but when you have them, you realize how difficult they are. It's glass top tables. And if you have kids, just be prepared to never have a clean table. Same goes for mirrored furniture items. Just run from those shiny mirrored reflective surfaces if you don't want to constantly be cleaning. And listen guys, I don't want anyone to think that I am not grateful for my house. I am grateful for my house all day, every day. I love my house. I'm so happy and thankful for it. This video is all in fun and, and it's really just things to think about if you don't like cleaning and a way to make your life easier. So about 13 years ago, I moved into this house and at the time we had two kids and we had a dog and I blissfully ordered two large cream colored area rugs. Do I need to go on? You're probably wondering how long those rugs stayed clean. I would say maybe a good four months. We don't have those rugs anymore. If you're looking at area rugs, I highly recommend just steer clear of the ivory colored ones, the cream, the white, the light colors. On the flip side, I, I would also stay away from the solid black ones. If you're looking for area rugs, get one in a medium color, something patterned or with a design, perfect. Speaking of rugs, another thing that I would steer clear of, even though I love them and I think they look really cool, I mean, they're probably out of style, but I love them, shag rugs. Anything with that shaggy, long pile is going to trap dust and dirt. It's going to be really hard to keep clean. A big reason why I don't like mine is because I can't use my cordless vacuum cleaner on it very well, and I definitely can't have the robot vacuum cleaner go over it, which is kind of like a deal breaker for me. And, you know, all of that dust that gets trapped in there, it causes allergies. It could tr trigger an asthma attack. Next is wicker or rattan furniture. I'm not actually sure how you even clean that. I would say if you do like the look of it, and I, and I like the look of it, I think it looks really pretty, try to put it somewhere that's not in the main living area of your home, whether that's in your kitchen or in a bathroom. I think that's where it could get really dirty. Otherwise, I do think it's pretty. Maybe what you could do, you could vacuum it with the brush attachment on your vacuum cleaner and kind of just go over it. That could work. This next one is from you guys, and a subscriber had mentioned window frames that are metal. I completely forgot when I saw this comment, I also lived in an apartment in college that had metal on the windows. So I feel your pain if you have metal around and, and your windows are made of metal. It causes a lot of condensation. So you'll, you'll see the wetness around your windows. You'll wipe it. You'll come back in five minutes. It will be back again. The wet moisture is a perfect breeding ground for mold, not the best option. Lots of comments on this one, and I fully agree, so I wanted to put it in this video. Jetted tubs. These are impossible to keep clean. Some of you said that you have them and you don't even use them because of how difficult they are to keep clean. And I understand because we've got one as well, and it's become a clothes rack at this point because we don't use it. It's just taking up space in the bathroom. Unless you're a total bath lover, don't do it. Okay, guys, well, thank you so much for watching. I'm gonna go ahead and link the part one to this video if you haven't seen it yet. So go ahead and click on it and I'll see you over there. Bye-bye.